Okay. So let's wait around for everybody to get on here. Thank you for um, muting. Let me see. Let me make this screen a little bigger so I can see more people. Did everybody have a good week? Yeah? Good. Me too. I've been busy, busy, busy. <clears throat> All right, three families. I think we have 11 families painting. That's awesome. Let's see. There's another. Zach is here. Oh, where'd it go? There he is. Welcome. Welcome to art class. I remembered my shirt today. <laughs> All right. Can you guys hear me okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. Okay, I'm not yelling. Sometimes I, I end up yelling because I feel like I have to talk loud. Alrighty. I'll wait for a few more families to get on because I don't want people to miss out. What we can do is, did anybody do their homework and do some sketches last week? You did? Yay! Why don't you turn it and show the camera so I can see what everybody did. Show me if you worked in your art journal and did some practice. This one is one of my favorite movies. Nice. Can you tell what it is? Looks like a starry night to me. Nightmare. Oh, oh, you are right. You are right. Van Gogh style, huh? I even made one. I even made something. You did? Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Is that a bunny? It's a hippo. Oh yes. Oh, one of my favorite characters. And I even did it while I was Aww. Oh, nice. You are so good. <laughs> hey, I love you. Lily, I love your bow. This is a a cloud that's already opened up, and that one's barely opened up. Oh, yeah. Yep. Very good. Good job. Boy, you've been busy. I can see you love art, huh? Very nice. Who else has some art to show me? You all do. Oh, good, good. Do you have a cat? Did you draw yeah. your own cat? No? Yes? Oh, great. I drew my own character, character from the game. Oh, good job. You were practicing. Very nice. Good. It makes me happy. All this practice helps you get better and better. And you have a helicopter. There's Kian. All right, one, two, three, four, five. About half of us are here. Um, let's see. Where is Kian? No, I'm not showing. Do I have more? Hmm. All right. Let's see, Zach and Kian, do you guys have some practice sketches to show me? I would love to see. 
I would love to see if you worked on something in your journal. Oh, there he is. Do you have your journal handy? Did you work on some sketches in your journal? Can you yes. <laughs> Oh, that got loud. Um, looks like Zach, are you still working on? Oh, there. Whoops, no. Nope. Zach, can you turn your video on? There you go. Zach, there's Zach, and there's Ken. Awesome. Good deal. Oh, we are both on. <laughs> okay, cool. Zach and Kian, do you have some artwork to show me from your journal? No? Okay, all right. Well, maybe next next time we meet, um, in fact, let me see what the date for that is. Let me go over to our schedule. Hmm, events. So our next class is going to be in October. And it looks like October 9th at 10 o'clock. We always use the same link, so don't worry about um, looking for a new link. It's always this same exact link, okay? And it will be October 9th, and we will start a new painting. And I was, hi bud, I was debating on what to do next. Um, what is well, it? Well, I had a couple ideas. There is one painting called The Scream. And what? it's a character that is like, doing this he has a funny face but he's screaming for something and um, it's kind of fun it's good for Halloween times I think if anybody celebrates Halloween or participates in Halloween, Halloween. do you? We, we can't go trick or treating because, because all of that, that that's going, going on. on yeah yeah I think we're just gonna buy a bunch of candy and watch Nightmare before Christmas and have our own little party at home. Um, but the other thought I had was, um, are a lot of you familiar with Starry Night? Starry by, Night? Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh, the same artist that we're doing the sunflowers with. It's a dark blue nighttime sky and there's a cypress tree. Um, I have made a version for Halloween that instead of the instead of the cypress tree we put a pumpkin with a cat sitting on top and we still have the night sky with the swirling clouds and stars what do you think of that for next month would that be fun good awesome Lily, what do you think? Can we get some th more thumbs thumbs up for a Halloween starry night? Awesome. Yeah. All right, then we'll do that one. Yeah. The scream, I wasn't sure if it would be too scary, and I think the starry night with a cat and pumpkin will be a lot more fun. So, all right, you guys decided, and that's what we will go with. Um... Alrighty, so let's just go get ahead and get started. Does everybody have their paints and their brush out? You do, awesome. Do you have a cup of water that you can rinse your paintbrush with? Yep. Yep, cup of water and your paper towel. And I want to talk a little bit about taking care of your brushes. Brushes can last years and years and years and I've got some that were actually my mom's that are probably 30 over 30 years old like and this one? Yep, exactly. Yep. So as long as you take care of your brush, that means don't let it sit in your cup of water 
for longer than our class, okay? Make sure you rinse the paint out really well in your cup, and I'll show you how to do the swirl. We're going to get a tiny cap when you use the wand. Right, right. So let's pretend I have paint on my brush, and I'll put it in my cup, and I'll swirl, swirl, swirl like that. Go to the right, go to the left. And then I will take it in my paper towel and I will fold the paper towel around it and squeeze and pull the brush off in this direction so we don't hurt the bristles. And when you're all done painting, um, each class needs you to wash your brush with a little bit of soapy water and then dry it, okay? And brushes should always either be stored flat. Oh, there's somebody. Brushes should be stored flat or in a cup like I have here. Let's see, there we go. Standing on the ends, never with the bristles down, okay? That saves the shape of your bristles. Welcome. Thanks for coming back to class. We are going to be painting today, finally, huh? I think that's everybody's favorite thing. That's my mouth. Is it? <laughs> Mine too. I really, I really like my yeah. <laughs> All right. Kimberly, do you want to turn your camera on? You don't have to. Um, I, I just want to make sure that you can see see me okay. Um, we were just talking about the next Another painting. Baby. Pardon me? Baby? Not yet. One moment. One moment. Um, I just want to catch up on a couple students. So our next class will be October 9th and we just kind of decided what we will do. I had um, debated on two different paintings and we kind of agreed that Starry Night with a Halloween twist will be fun. So Starry Night, the nighttime sky, instead of a big dark cypress tree in the front, it's going to be a pumpkin with a cat. So I will have that kit for you the week of class, the week of the ninth, um, probably Wednesday and Thursday. And I'll have that drawing already on your canvas and you'll get the same kind of things. You'll get your canvas um, do, 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 and your paint. You already have your brush, so hang on to your brush and your drawing pencil and your four by six card. You will get another, a new four by six card that you can, um, I'd like you to either tape or glue your picture that I will send you with your kit, okay? We're working on, um, oops, someone messaged me. We are working on gathering um, kind of like flashcards. Does everybody know what flashcards are? No. They help you study for things. So, um, oh, Leah's trying to get in, hold on. Oh, the sticker is just for fun, yep. Yeah, the stickers I found, um, and that's the picture that you can glue or tape onto the four by six card. And you can put them all together at the end of the year and you have a great way to keep track of the paintings that you did. And on the put that on the, the blank side. And then on the line side, um, parents can help little ones write the name of the artist and the name of the painting. So you can keep track of all the artwork that you did for the year, okay? Um, let me see if Leah's having trouble getting in. <laughs> She's messaging me. <laughs> Where is she? Can you try your stuff? Oh, there she is. <laughs> all right. Yes, yes, Zach. Sorry. <laughs> Do you have a question for me? It's my birthday on October 9. October 9, yep. Oh, wait, wait, what is it? Okay. October 9. Okay. 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 Okay.
It's my birthday on October 9th. Your birthday? Oh my goodness. We'll have to sing happy birthday. Will that be okay? That's awesome. What a great day to have a birthday on Art Club Day. Sweet. Perfect. Okay. So, let's get started. Who's excited? I am. Alright, so I am looking at the painting that I already made. I'll show you that. And it's the picture right on your screen. So, we are going to follow that. Yep, yep. And that is the one I would like you to paint, um, to glue or to tape down on your 4x6 card. Okay? The little stickers that I gave you all, that is a painting of Van Gogh, you can put those on anything. That is your sticker. I just found the fun stickers for you guys to have. But the painting that we're going to do now, that picture, I would like you to put on your 4x6 card so you can keep track of the paintings that you work on this year. Another thing is those are great learn um work samples if you are in connecting or inspire that's a great way to show your teacher what you've been doing and you could submit that for a work sample okay so um ramirez says, says, says october 9th is our next class and um i will send out a reminder um we decided we'll do starry night with the Halloween version. <laughs> it will, instead of the cypress tree, it's gonna be the pumpkin and a cat sitting on the pumpkin. So that's what we will do for next month. So we'll be studying Van Gogh a little bit more, but that's okay. We've got some more stuff for him. So we're gonna peek quick at our color wheel. We talked a little bit about the color wheel last time. And do you remember the primary colors? yellow, red, and blue. And we've got some of those versions we're working with today. All right, so go ahead. I have the same paints as you guys. Let's get our paints out and we are going to start with the background. I usually like to start with the background and some of you might have the sticker for Van Gogh's sunflowers in your kit. I found different, different stickers of different paintings of his. And some of the, the sunflowers have a blue background, have this aqua background. Some have a yellow background. I really like the one with the aqua background. That's why we were doing this one today. So what we will do, get your paintbrush out. Got your cup handy, your rinse water, and let's dig in. So go ahead and let's get some paint, the aqua paint. Whoops, I lost her. Did you get it? Okay. So the aqua, we are going to start with the background. Did she get in? Okay, good. I'm seeing double vision. <laughs> All right, we are going to go around the flowers as best you can. It does not have to be perfect. I just want you to fill in the background as best you can, okay? So I'm gonna start on the top. I like to start on the top and work down. If you start on the bottom and worked up, you're gonna get your arm all over the paint, aren't you? So start at the top and we're going to go to the edge and I'm just going to go around the edge of the flowers. See? Just go around the edge of the flowers. It does not have to be perfect because when we paint the flowers, the flowers will go overlapping that blue background a little bit, okay? So just do your best. Go in between those flower petals with the flat, pointy edge of your brush. Okay? 
So I'm just going around the pointy sunflower. Now there are two different flowers in this vase here. And I know the pointy ones look most like sunflowers, don't they? I'm pretty sure the pointy flowers are sunflowers. Now these bumpy, round, more fluffy flowers, I'm going to call them mums because they remind me of mums. Now, Vincent was not here in America. I'm not exactly sure what kind of flowers he looked at when he painted these over a hundred years ago. Way over a hundred years ago. That's like a billion years ago. <laughs> it seems like it, doesn't it? So I am just going right across, right up to the edge. I hope everybody has a table covering. Now this acrylic paint will scrub right off your table. I've had many marks on my own table. Just try to be careful and not paint right on your table. <laughs> your moms will appreciate that. So try to keep the paint on your canvas. So I'm just going right around from the top, around this round flower. I'm just kind of taking my brush and going in and out around those bumpy lines I gave you. Nope, you do not need water right now. We were going full strength paint. We will use the water when we rinse our brush and get the blue off. So, Right now we're only worrying about the outside, going around the outside of all these different shaped flowers. Yep. Do you see my, let's see if I can get it in the camera. My brush is just like yours. It's flat and has a pointy edge when it's sideways. When you turn it, it's flat and wider. So I'm using that nice narrow edge to go in between our flowers. Now you will see there are some spaces of background in between these flowers. If you want to do that now and you can see those spaces that you can see in the image. Oh my gosh. Better mute my phone, huh? <laughs> so you can see some of those spaces that you see through around the edge of some of these flowers. You can paint that now or you can wait till after we get the flowers in and you can see those spaces better, okay? So I'm just bringing this pretty aqua in and around all those different shapes of petals on our flowers. Now, last time we talked a little bit about cool and warm colors. Do you guys remember? Do you remember if blue is a warm or cool color? Anybody want to answer? Cool, very good, Lily. You are paying attention, awesome. Yes, blue and green and purple and some pinks are all cool colors. And I've got a picture I will show you real quick. Here it is. See all the warm and cool colors? So the background is one of these, isn't it? In a minute we will get to the flowers and we'll talk about whether they're warm or cool. We kind of talked about how the sunflowers, that Van Gogh was always a very sad man and even though he painted things that were bright and sunny like sunflowers. So the sunflowers are definitely warm. They're bright and sunny like the sun. All right, how is everybody doing? 
Good, awesome. Yes, I like that. You can give me a thumbs up, then you don't have to unmute. Let me know, start raising your hand when you have the background done up to the table, okay? This line is the edge of our table that the vase is sitting on. And we're going to paint up to that table line, okay? I like to call that my horizon line. It kind of looks like the horizon. If you look off in a distance and you see the edge of the ground where the sky meets the ground, we call that a horizon. And this painting has a horizon line and it's the table. It gives us, it gives the object something to sit on. It gives the vase a flat surface to be on so it doesn't look like it's floating. If we didn't have this line here, it would look like it's just kind of floating in the air, right? And Van Gogh was very aware of that and he didn't want his vase of flowers to be floating. It would probably tip over and spill, right? <laughs> So we have a horizon line, which is a table. When you have a still life, you often have a table or a stand, maybe a box that the items are sitting on. Now, some of your older students, if you're probably eight or 10 and older, I want you to play around with some of your paints a little bit more. I'm going to give you a little bit of some tips and a little bit of an assignment I'd like to see you try. So if you're a little bit older or you're ready to add in some other colors to your background like white. In my grown-up class we added some white to this turquoise background just a little bit almost like clouds but not big solid white clouds, just some white to change up that kind of flat background of just blue. So if you're feeling up to it and you have your background done already, you can add in a little white and I will show you in one minute here what I mean. And I'll let the rest of you finish your background. And I also want to mention, I know some of the exercises that I did last class were a little bit younger. And I'm trying to keep this very family style um, taught so I can cover different ages. Oh, there you are. There's Dexter and Zoe. Welcome, you guys. I'm glad you joined us. Dexter and Zoe, we have started on our background. So if you have a cup of water to rinse your brush with, we only need it for rinsing. We're not adding water, we're doing straight paint. And if you have your paints ready, and you can take your time, you're not behind, you can start with your aqua colored, that blue you have in your kit, and we just painted the background and we're going around all the edges of the flowers. So whenever you're ready, you can start, you guys. All right, so now I'm going to, really? for, yes. I, I totally, totally wrote, wrote down, down 1030. 1030. I have, I have no, no idea, idea why, why. <laughs> I'm the one that runs all this. this. So, so we're, we're just, just getting get them, get them to do the, the blue, blue and we're, all, we're, we're caught, caught up. up. Yeah, yep. Okay. And I was just, uh, yeah, no worries. <laughs> Yeah, I was just reminding October 9th is our next class and we kind of voted on a starry night with a Halloween theme. So it will yeah. be this, yeah, you I, you know the starry night, huh? It will be instead of that cypress tree, it will be a pumpkin with a cat sitting on the pumpkin. So it's a really cute design I did last year. I never got to use it. So that's what we're gonna do next time. Um, so now I started talking about you older kids that would want to play around with color a little bit. Also, I want to talk about the drawing day. So I started to say how I know this is a lot of these drawing exercises are geared to 
younger kids. It is good practice for everybody to practice drawing. It's good to loosen up. Um, the practice is good for loosening up your wrist for drawing and for painting. And from now on, when I'm doing the exercises, um, the drawing exercises, if you older kids would like to use one of your pages, um, that current page that we're working on for that particular class, I'd like you to look at you can look at my the painting that I have on the screen here or look at your own canvas and I would like you to practice sketching that next time so next time will be the starry night Halloween and you older kids can practice sketching that in your journal okay the rest of us will with the littler kids will practice the exercises and we'll practice some of the shapes that we have in Starry Night. For painting, we will, we're, you older kids, we're going to, once you have your background done, we're going to add a little bit of white, just a little bit. And I'm going to get my paintbrush a little bit wet, okay? I'm dipping it in my water and does everybody have a paper plate? Good, okay. I couldn't remember if I put those in. I was pretty sure I did. So you can get your paintbrush wet, dip it in a little bit of your white. And this is just for older kids that want to try something a little bit more advanced. If you're younger and you wanna do it, feel free, have at it. So I'm adding a watered down white to my background just a little bit. I'm going to blot it on like that so it's not bright white. Do you see it's very translucent? That means you can see through it. So I am just blotting this real light coat of white around my background. Is everybody finishing up on their turquoise background just about okay good so you older kids that want to add a little bit of white to your background you can go back and forth from a thin thin watered down white you can dip your brush in I like to use the lids on my cups you a little bit of aqua to put back on top of your white. See how I'm kind of blending in a little aqua on the white? And I'm just getting the aqua blended in more with the white that I just added just to lighten up and make the background a little more interesting. And I like to do, when I'm doing a bigger area, like this background covers a pretty big area. I like to use the flat side of my brush. Do you see how I'm using it flat? You can get a different paint stroke when it's flat as opposed to when you're using that pointy edge, okay? So I'm using the flat side of this brush and just going around and I'm adding a little bit of that thinned out white into the background. Again, this is only if you want to do this. This is just a little bit further step. Yes, Lily, do you have a question? Go ahead and unmute. My mom is gonna help me with the background. Okay, perfect. Thanks, mom. So I'm just adding a tiny bit. So I did a little bit of that thinned out white, went back with my aqua and put a little bit more aqua on top of that white. Now let me put it closer to the camera. Can you see how it's almost a little bit cloudy looking? It just makes the background a little more interesting. But you don't have to do that, okay? I see Moo, Amelia, are you painting with us today? I can't wait to see everybody's stuff, including Moo's. 
All right. Now you see I did not fill in any spaces inside in between the flowers yet. I will do that after we get our sunflowers on, okay? Because some of those spaces are hard to tell if they're a stem or part of the flower or a leaf. So I will wait and we'll do that later. So I don't need my aqua right now. You can put your top on your aqua so you don't knock it over. And sometimes I do. It's better safe with a top <laughs> around me. All right. Now let's do the table. Remember, we're working from top to bottom to keep our arm from getting all over our paint. And then we're going to do a thin coat of paint for the table so it will dry faster. And we don't need as solid of a color for the table. In my painting that you see in the photo on the screen, I did a real thin coat of kind of a yellow orange and I think I'm going to mix right in my lid here. So I want you to get your yellow and you have two different browns. I want you to get the more orange brown, okay? See there's a darker brown and an orange brown, kind of a rust color. This is called Burnt Sienna, and this is the one I want you to get. Let me see. Do you see that orangey brown? The lighter one of the browns. I, yep, that looks like everyone's got it. Yep. So we're going to mix some of this with some of this, okay? So when we learn about mixing colors, we only take a little bit at a time, okay? So on your plate, on your plate, we're going to get a little bit of this brown. Yes? yes. Um, the yellow and the brown. Yep. That yeah. rusty orangey brown and your yellow. Yep, perfect, Lily. So I'm getting about half of a brush of the burnt sienna, that orangey brown. And I have some yellow. See, I'm just using my lids. I like to use my lids and not waste them. So I'm using a little of that orangey brown and mixing it in the yellow and you'll see what color you get. So we start out with just a little bit at a time. We're not gonna pour the whole cup of paint because we need those colors still for other parts of the painting. So we're just starting with a little bit of the burnt sienna and a little bit of the yellow, okay? And this is the shade I get. It's kind of orange, isn't it? Does it look orange? It's a warm color. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow, okay? So take a little dip. I'm gonna start with a cleaner brush. I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm gonna take a little more yellow. Can you get a brush size worth on your brush of yellow? Where's my camera? That much? And we'll mix it with the rest. Where's my, there we go. Okay, perfect. This is our tabletop color, okay? Everybody see that color? So we are going to go one direction we call horizontal along that table line we talked about, we are going to follow that line straight across. Start right at your vase and go straight across, okay? And another coat. Did somebody have a question? Nope, we're okay? Okay, good. 
So I'm going to keep going from the vase to the edge and I'm just going straight across because I like the look of that straight line because tables, wood tables have a wood grain and they go all in one direction, kind of like your floors. On your floors, if you have wood floors, they all go in one direction, don't they? Same with tables. So I am going to go around the vase with this yellow brown mixture. It's very warm. It's almost as bright as our sunflowers. I'm going to get a little more paint. How's everybody doing? Okay? Give me a thumbs up. Awesome. Good deal. Yay! All right, now I'm going to work on the other side of the table and come over following that horizon line or the edge of the table that I gave you on your canvas. And keep going and fill up that table with horizontal strokes. And let me know when everybody has the table done. I think I am happy with it. You can go over the lines on your vase. That's okay. I went over a little bit, see here? I did not paint inside the lines because it doesn't matter. <laughs> We're gonna cover up those lines. All right, so if you've got your table done, then let's go ahead and rinse your brush, okay? We're going to start on the greens in our painting. So rinse your brush really well. Remember how I showed you to swirl in your cup? Swirl it really well and put it on your paper towel and pull the water off. That keeps your bristles going in the right direction to save your brush. All right. Now I'm done with that brown, that orangey brown for the moment. And we're going to go right to um, I said green. Let me grab my green. So well, let's work on the green. Do you see green in your picture? There's the parts of the flower petals have some green. So if you think of a blossom of a flower, it's kind of covered in green until those petals open up, the flower opens up. There's still some green in the back. So you're seeing in our the image here on the screen. You see some greens behind the flowers. You see some stems. You even see a few leaves. We're going to do those greens. So if you can follow in your picture, you also have the photo. You should have the photo of it um, with you in your kit. You can use that and find all the green areas on your painting. So let's dive in and get some of the green on, okay? That will give our, us time for the background and the table to dry. So watch your arm so you don't get your arm on the wet table area. So I am just using the pointy flat edge to do those small pointy areas. Do your best. That's all I ask. So, green. Where is green on our chart here? Is green warm or cool? Cool. Very good. Green oh. is a cool color. Yep. So we have a mixture of warm and cool colors in this painting, don't we? And I'm just going in with that pointy edge of my brush and I'm creating some pointy petals behind this flower. And 
this sunflower on the side here has lots of green areas behind it. It must be a newer blossom. Yep, all the way around your flower. That flower on the left has lots of green around it. It does, there is some aqua that will fill in in a little bit, so don't confuse. Like on the right side here, um, I'm not going to put any green. This flower that's hanging on the left here, it kind of is curling over. That looks like a new blossom as well. We're going to paint those pointy areas green. And the stem, we're going to bring that stem right around with our brush. Get some more green going here. And kind of practice making points with the tip of your brush. I have the same kind of brush as you. And there's a leaf with this flower right next to it. So it, this little pointy it spot right here is a leaf. We're going to make that green. And these pointy spots here are leaves as well. And I'm starting from the point and going inward. Fill that in a little bit. Where else do you see? I see some more green. Oh, this, this sunflower right here has a stem. Let's get that stem green straight down. It almost looks like it connects that flower to that flower. And then there's a stem behind this. And then a stem right here. How's everybody doing with their green, okay? No, no, no. All right. There's a little bit of, let's see. Okay, this sunflower on the right side, on the bottom has some green petals that kind of stick out from behind. So we're going to make that green. And on the side here, there's some green petals. like that. And while I'm on the top area, do you see the centers? Some of these flowers have green centers, some have red centers. The sunflowers have red centers, and then those round poofy flowers, those mums, have green centers. Let's make the round flowers have green centers while we still have green on our brush. So the top two, I'm just dabbing in the paint. Do you see? I'm just going blot, 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 covering in that center and covering in this center. Okay. Do you see some more round flowers that need a green center? I see two more. Here's a green center. And here's a green center. Are you already done? <laughs> he's done? Wow, he's fast. Okay. And I have one more set of stems and leaves. So this bottom right flower, I'm going to 
get the leaves painted, make, try and make into a point, and that leaf, and then the stem goes right into some green petals. Okay. All right. I think I've got all our green. How's everybody doing on the green? Just about set? All right. I'm rinsing the green off my brush. And if you're not done with your green, just take your time. Because remember, um, I will be sending the... Um, did I send? Now I'm wondering. Oh, Kim got booted off. Okay, there she's back. Um, but this means the orange is yellow. So we, you will have a recording to use. Um, now I'm forgetting. I think I sent it. I'm not sure if I sent it to everybody, the recording. So, um, but I think I did. Um, so you, if you need to go back and work on this after we're done with class in a little bit here, um, your parents will have the link to that, okay? Um, whatever email I was using to contact your, your folks, um, the link will be in that email, okay? All right, let's do, how about, let's get our orange out. And this orange, do you know what color it was called when I bought it in the bottle? It was called pumpkin, pumpkin orange. We're going to be doing pumpkins next time, huh? All right, I am putting my green away. Now you'll probably have some extra paint. It won't be necessary to keep it for our next painting, but if you want to do other projects on paper, you can use these paints, okay, when we're all done. So, all right, orange. So I see some flowers that have orange as well as our vase. So... Which flowers have orange in them? The pointy, the pointy one. one. Yes, the sunflowers have orange, don't they? And there's one of those fluffy orange mums that we will also make orange, okay? Do you see it on the picture? All right, so let's start from the top and go downward. So let's use up, I like to, I know you should probably have some paint stuck in your um, lid. I like to use some of that paint up. So let's scoop some of that paint and we're going to put some coats of orange on our sunflowers. So I'm going to start with the flower on the left and I'm not going to, I'm going to start at the center. I'm going to leave that center white for now. And from the center out, I'm just making some short brush strokes to go outward, kind of like a sunburst of orange and almost bring it to the edges of the white tips that you see on your canvas, but it's not gonna cover up the whole thing. We really want to see this orange come through when we put yellow on. And the yellow is what's going to carry out to the edges, okay? So I'm just going to keep going around with this orange and we're just using solid orange and I'm going from the center out, but not all the way to the tips. Center, outward. It's just bringing some nice bright orange to this flower. Now I'm going to go to the next flower, the next sunflower right next to it here. Start from that center area, leaving the center white, because that's going to be red in a moment. And bring those strokes of orange outward from that center, like a sunburst. I think I've seen fireworks kind of look like this too. So center and out. And I'm gonna try and get to most of these little petals here. If you miss a petal, that's okay. We just want some orange to see through under our yellow, all right? And the next one, I'm going to do the sunflower on the right side. From the center, I go out, bring those strokes outward. Again, like another sunburst. 
See how I'm leaving a little bit of white? Let me bring it up close. I'm leaving some white so our yellow will be able to be seen. Some, some yellows are really transparent or very see-through and don't cover super well. This, this yellow is pretty good. This is a good yellow. But I'm leaving a little bit of the white so the yellow can show through even better. So center outward towards the end of the petals. Okay, and now we're going to do this orange flower, the fluffy one. I'm just going to blot. Do you see how I'm using the, the um, narrow part of my brush? I'm just blotting around that whole circle shape of that flower. And I'm covering it all in right up next to that green. Is everybody on the round puffy flower? Get a little bit more orange. And since we're using the same color for a little bit here, we're just gonna continue dipping in the orange and filling in that white canvas where this orange flower is. All the way to the edge of the orange flower. Like we left some white areas on the sunflowers, but this one we're gonna fill right in, leaving the center green, okay? And I've got two more little flowers here that need a little orange. And I think it's gonna be, oh, you know, I just found some green I missed. <laughs> Sometimes you'll do that as you're painting along, you'll see something you missed. So I will catch that in a second. So I'm just gonna put a few strokes from the center at the green here on the left, a few orange strokes. It's mostly yellow flower. So just a little bit, just a couple strokes of orange on this one and a couple on this one on the right. Just add a little bit of orange, nice bright orange. Just a little bit because we're going to go over it with yellow in just a moment. And now I need to work on the vase. So the vase is a little bit lighter shade of this pumpkin orange. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to get the orange off my brush so I can scoop a little white. If you have enough white that you can pour onto your plate, just a little bit, I would say about this much white you can pour onto your plate, okay? We're going to mix your white with the orange. So I'm doing about that much white. And again, I'm just mixing in my lid so I can use up my lids and I'm going to get just a little bit of orange. A little orange goes a long ways when you're mixing white. Okay, mix it because we want our orange to be lighter than what the paint bottle gave us. Do you see how it made almost a peach color? Did everybody create a peach color? A little bit of white more white, a little bit of orange. So white lightens colors, doesn't it? White is a good color if you need to make a lighter shade of another color. So I am painting the vase this peach color, okay? You don't need a whole lot because the vase is not very big. I'm going along the edge of my green leaves and you'll see a little space here on the right side. Part of this is a vase, part of it is the background and I will finish that background in a little bit. So I'm leaving that little strip of white right here, okay? I just put my finger in my paint. 
and I'm going right up next to the edge of the leaves and try to leave your line did you see the pencil line I gave you that kind of goes looks like a dash line around the vase leave that if you can because we're going to cover it with um, that dark um, that orangey brown so here is the top of the vase if you want to add a little more white and make the bottom part of the vase a little bit lighter you can but if you're happy with this peachy color you can just use that one I'm going to lighten mine just a little bit. Can't really see a difference. So I'm leaving a stripe because I think this vase that Van Gogh painted had a stripe in it. So I'm just following the edges of the vase. And just like that. Okay, now I am done with the orange. I'm going to rinse the orange really well off my brush. And we're going to go to yellow. So I'm done with the orange. I'm going to put my top on so I don't tip it over. And I've got my yellow. So let's dip into the yellow. Where do you see yellow? Those sunflowers all have yellow, don't they? So let's go over. This one is kind of wet. It's okay painting some of your yellow on top of the wet orange, but I'm just going to go from about the middle of the flower and I'm just going to create some yellow petals of the flower to go to the end all right so yellow from about the middle of the flower out to the end yellow some of your yellow can go on top of the orange and this is making a very bright sunflower So I'm going right over top of the orange. You can still see that orange through the yellow though. And I'm making petals with the yellow. Yeah, like that. How is everybody doing? Hanging in there? Is it getting hard or are you still having fun? Fun. Fun? Good. Oh, dancing. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. Yep, we're just about to the red. Yep. And then we'll outline our vase and our table and we'll be done. Yay. Yay. So we are going to go over a little bit. If anybody has to leave, I know one family had to leave early. Um, I will get you the um, recording. Um, I'll get everybody the recording, but yeah. if you if you miss, I don't want you to miss anything, so you'll have the recording. It's actually in YouTube. I've got a private channel in YouTube where I store some of these kind of videos. So they're accessible to everybody. All right, so I'm just covering the petals on this sunflower. I know it's a little bit hard to make pointy petals with this brush, but for the most part, this is a good brush because it does some pointy things and it does lots of flat area like we did the background. All right, so I've got yellow on that one. I'm going to bring some yellow into this sunflower. And when we're all done, I would love for you, did you see where Maria put, um, posted about um, posting your pictures? I don't want to post 
kids' pictures, but I want to post your paintings, okay? I want to see everybody's paintings when you're all done. If you're not done at the end of this class, when you finish it, can you post it, please? I can't wait to see everybody's work. It makes me so happy to see everybody doing this. It's so exciting. All right, so that sunflower is done. I'm going to bring a little bit of yellow to this sunflower that's just kind of opening up and it kind of turns the stem curves so this one on the side here needs a little yellow right on top of the orange petals like that and this sunflower on the right side that hangs down we're going to throw in a little yellow there to brighten up that orange and just like that alrighty and while we have some yellow I'm going to do some dots now in the picture on your screen this middle orange mum or this orange round flower we made has some yellow dots because the sun was shining on it making it reflect some yellow sun so we're putting some dots just with your the point of your brush on top of this orange flower okay and then you can even put some yellow dots on the green center because there's sun reflecting on that too now I'm kind of done with our yellow. I'm rinsing the yellow off my brush. So go ahead and rinse. And I need to fix a green spot real quick before I forget. These leaves right here I forgot to do to make green. All right. So now we're going to grab our red. Now if you're an older student and would like to mix a little dark red, we are going to take a little bit of your brown. And this is for just for the older students that want to try this. The rest of you, we're going to just do red flowers, those three red flowers and then three centers. So if you're an older student and want to practice mixing some more colors, you'll take your red and your darker brown and on your plate you'll mix a little bit of the brown and a little red, a little more of the red than brown. And you'll make a, mix a darker red. For the rest of you, we are just using straight red. So these flowers we're going to blot. Remember how we did this with the orange one? blot around covering up any white canvas that you have poking through there still and go in between these pointy sunflowers try not to cover them up but if you have to go back and touch up a little bit of yellow you can so I'm just blotting with the point of my brush Making this flower red and the same thing for the flower next to it and this flower has bumpy edges so if you want to make all the edges on these bumpy go for it. I'm going right up next to that green, that green center. I'm going to try and cover up the white canvas, but it's okay to have some canvas come through. I like the look of that. So go right around and dab in your red. I'm going right out to the edges to cover up that white canvas like so okay and then I see three there's one more of those did you have a question no okay 
So I'm going to blot in with my red. And again, if you are older and you want to mix a little brown on your plate with the red to make it a darker red, do that. And you will be making all three of these flowers a darker red. And then if you do the darker red flowers, you can go back when it's dry and add a little bit of this bright red to the top. Do you see how I have some dots of yellow? You can do dots of red and yellow. I'm going right up close to the center. Okay, that's good. I'm going to touch up a little bit here. Now, one, two, those three sunflowers also have red centers, so let's dab some red in those centers. Covering up the white canvas. Does not have to be a perfect circle. I'm just blotching it in. Remember, these are not photographs. They are not perfect. They are paintings, our own impression of what we see in the picture. That's where we get impressionism from. Van Gogh was a post-impressionistic painter. So he learned from the impressionists and he kind of made his own style. And they call it now, they call it post-impressionism. So I'm putting a two swipes of red on this sunflower and I don't think we need any red on that sunflower and then we will touch up let me see here my water, water looks, looks like chocolate, chocolate. No, it, no. yes <laughs> it's getting dirty isn't it yeah. oh you used a jar that's a great idea jars or plastic or paper cups are great for rinse waters. All right, so I'm done with my red. I am going to coconut milk. Coconut milk? Ooh, nice. I like coconut milk. <laughs> All right, now using, um, let's go back to that, that rusty orangey brown, okay? We need a little bit of that to make some lines. We're going to outline our vase and outline our table or horizon line, okay? And then we're just about done. Is everybody having fun? Yeah. yeah. Is class taking too long or do you like it? I like it. It's okay. A little, little bit, bit long. It is a little long. Okay, we're almost done. Bear with me. Yeah, we're working on something. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> We just, we just left, left on our bed, bed, but it's not on a mattress. Oh, yes. But it was just fun. fun. Yep. All right, I'm taking that flat, narrow edge. I keep having to find my camera here. Okay, that narrow edge of my brush, I am bringing that outline down on this side of the vase. And this side of the vase. And bring that all the way down to the bottom edge. I'm bringing a line to make the bottom of your vase as well as that center line. If you still have a line that you can see through, I'm bringing a line there. Kind of a long dash line. A one in the middle and then the one on the edge. All right. And we will, whoops, actually I need to do our horizon line. So we'll start from this, from the vase and go out. Dab a little more paint. And from the vase, this side, we'll go out all the way to the edge of the canvas. And after we get off, I won't make you sit and watch me, but I'm going to 
finish in those center areas that I didn't do when we did the background. I'll do that on my own. So if you have any white areas in between the flowers, you can do that on your own. And his picture, do you see one little thing? Do you see a white shiny part on the vase? Yeah. Yep, we're gonna dab into, rinse your brush, rinse that orangey brown off your brush, and we're gonna dab into our white a tiny bit and make a shiny reflection on this pretty vase. So you can do one mark, I'm gonna do three marks. I'm gonna do mark there, and a short one on the top and a short one on the bottom. And then there's one right here. And that is the shiny reflection on the vase. Now, do you know what everybody needs to do when they're done with their painting? You can get help if you need to. Write your name. You need to sign your painting. You are an artist. And artists sign their painting. You can sign it on the front. You can, you can sign it on the back, wherever you like, all right? Well, thank you so much, everybody, for painting with me today. I hope you all had fun. Did you learn some things today? Did you? You're welcome. You're so welcome. So next time, um, well, not even next time. When you're done with your painting, ask your parents to get a picture and post it in our group. You're done? Do you want to show me? Whoever has it done, show me right here. <gasps> Beautiful. Oh my goodness. You did awesome. Oh my goodness. Yes. Wow. Wow. Oh, you guys make me so proud. Look at all these sunflowers. I oh, love it. Wow. Good job. Everyone did amazing. Parents, you should be so proud as well. Wow. I wish I had these kind of classes when I was little. <laughs> I was in public school and we didn't get that. Very nice. Good job. All right. So next time we will be doing the Starry Night with a Halloween twist with a pumpkin and cat. And you will get new sets of paint and a new canvas a new four by six card and pictured. So go ahead and if you haven't yet, glue or tape your sunflower picture, the little picture uh, that goes to the four by six card and have someone help you write Vincent Van Gogh on the lines on the back and sunflowers, cause that's the name of the painting we did today. Really? Yep, really. <laughs> And sunflowers. Yeah. Vase, vase, I think I think it's just sunflowers. Some might be called vase of sunflowers. But again, these extra paints that you have left today are yours to keep and play with. Make sure you ask your mom or dad if you can get them out. But they're yours to play with. Just make sure you rinse your brush and wash it with a little soapy water when you're done, okay? Anybody have any questions? Bye. All right. Bye, you guys. Thank you so bye. much. Bye. 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 You guys take bye. care. Bye.